Notre speaker est un habitué, il va nous parler de la durabilité comme enjeu clé pour les entreprises d'assurance et je voudrais accueillir Don Forgeron. Uh, Don Forgeron, very welcome to this uh, conference and delighted to have you among us today even if it's remote. Thank you uh, uh, Tammy and, and thank you uh, Bashir uh, for the invitation to, uh, to join you today and hello everyone. I really do appreciate the opportunity uh, to be with you, even though it's not in person. Um, one of these events, I hope to, uh, to be able to make it down. Um, as I said, I appreciate the chance to be with you today. It's a chance for us to, uh, to reflect on, on recent events, some of the emerging challenges, uh, and to share some thoughts on the road ahead for our industry, especially as it relates to sustainability and the impact Uh, of climate change. I'm speaking to you from Canada, as many of you know, um, and Canada is not known uh, exactly uh, for its heat waves. Uh, but let me tell you about this past summer. In the span of only a few days, we lost more than 500 people to record high temperatures in our western province of British Columbia. And no one was prepared for a crisis of this magnitude. One day, the town of Lytton set a Canadian heat record, almost 50 degrees Celsius. The next day, a wildfire sparked in a nearby valley, and within hours, the entire town had burned to the ground. An unprecedented disaster and possibly an omen for what's to come in future years. Now, of course, Canada is not the only country experiencing impacts of our changing climate. Floods, storms, and wildfires are raging with greater frequency and severity. And I know that severe drought is causing a strain on the farmers of Morocco. And as one expert pointed out, droughts used to happen there once a decade. Now it's every other year. Insurance industry losses from natural disasters uh, or catastrophes reached $120 billion dollars U.S. last year, the second highest total, annual total ever. And the impact on families, on livelihoods, on public treasuries continues to grow. Now, adapting to our changing world is an urgent short-term priority for all of us. But there's also a collective need to shift towards a more sustainable society over the longer term. The Global Federation of Insurance Associations is a worldwide voice for insurance associations. We understand the risk to life, property, and infrastructure from the growing number of severe weather events. And we believe that insurers can and will have a key role to play in using sustainable finance to help the global economy transition toward net zero. So what are we talking about when we talk about sustainable finance? It can mean different things to different people in different industries. For the purposes of our discussion, it's about serving our clients and managing our assets in a way that encourages and incentivizes the kind of change we need to see in the world. Across the globe, insurers are developing new products and services that promote and reward sustainable actions and choices. I'll give you just a few examples. Swiss Re has teamed up with the Nature Conservancy and regional governments in Mexico. Their new underwriting product will help protect a fragile coral reef off the Yucatan Peninsula. Travelers 
offers a discount to customers whose homes are certified green by the LEED program. And there are many more. The key takeaway is that our industry is focused on innovation as a way of encouraging a more sustainable way of living. And by the way, that goes for insurers themselves, not just their clients. For instance, many insurers have already individually committed to meeting the targets set in the Paris Climate Agreement. A number have also committed to transition their underwriting portfolios to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, and some even sooner. Insurers in some countries are well ahead of others. Some have been slower to act, but they're working hard to catch up and they're taking lessons and guidance from those who are further along this important journey. Another significant way that insurers can make a difference, we can, in our capacity as long-term investors, directly drive the transition towards a sustainable economy. Global insurers have more than $30 trillion of assets under management. That's enough to make a real impact. Through choices in how those assets are invested, we can make a difference. More and more insurers are directing funds to companies and projects that support a more sustainable future. Again, just a couple of examples to illustrate the potential here. Aviva recently announced a significant investment in sustainability-focused venture capital funds. Zurich has launched its carbon-neutral World Equity Fund, which invests in low-emission companies. We will all benefit from having a larger number of sustainably-minded companies in operation, creating jobs, generating growth, while also contributing to a better future. The possibilities inherent in public-private partnerships are also very intriguing. Morocco has made a name for itself as a climate leader. One of its flagship projects is the world's largest concentrated solar power plant, more than 11 square miles of curved mirrors. And it was built with both public and private investment. In Montreal, a city well known to some of you, one of Canada's biggest cities, a massive new transit system is being built, not by government, but by a public pension fund. The system will be carbon neutral and will take thousands of cars off the road. And once it's operational, it will provide a reliable annual profit to the fund, which in turn supports the retirement of millions. These are the kinds of ambitious projects that insurers have the means to support. There doesn't need to be a trade-off between positive change and positive returns. Now, of course, transformation on such a massive scale won't be easy and it won't happen overnight. We need to see an increase in the number of sustainable projects around the world. And we need to ensure that the data from those projects as well as the data for emission, emissions causing activities is disclosed in a more standardized way to help ensure the efficient allocation of capital as we seek to reduce finance emissions. But with leadership and determination, we can over time evolve both our economies and our way of life. Beyond any direct investments, our hope is that Jafia can play a role in helping to coordinate a dialogue between government and the private sector. We need to find common ground on the types of investments and decisions that will have the greatest positive impact. Now, we all have professional reasons for being motivated to encourage a greater focus on sustainability, but it's also personal to each of us. I grew up on the east coast of Canada on a small island in the Atlantic Ocean. And I can't go back there without wondering how this beautiful place will ultimately be transformed. How will it be different for my grandson? And what may be lost along the way? It can be disheartening 
but it can also be motivating. It can prompt us to ask, what can we do now to limit the impacts, reduce the dangers, and turn the tide? So let me leave you today with, with this thought. Mobilizing private capital is critical to driving and financing the transition to a low carbon economy. The pandemic has set us back a bit for understandable reasons. Our focus has shifted. But it's essential that we now turn our attention back to this urgent issue. Today, more than ever before, institutions and investors are considering environmental, social, and governance factors as part of their decision-making process. They're thinking about climate risk. They're searching for solutions for sustainable options that will contribute to a better world and a better way forward. But we can't just talk about it. We need to dig in and get to work. And it's not just about advocacy, it's about action. Let there be no doubt, there is enormous potential in sustainable finance. It presents us with, a, with an opportunity to fuel growth and enhance stability. By transitioning towards more resilient, more inclusive, and greener economies and societies. We should be heartened and energized by the fact that so many of us now share the same goal, confronting and adapting to the short and longer term challenges of climate change. We all seek the same destination. The challenge now is to find our way along the same path. And we need to get there together, and we need to get moving now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Don Forgen. Let me just remind that you are president of Global Federation of Insurance Associations and the president and CEO of the Canadian Insurance Bureau. Thank you for being with us. And I guess it's very early in the morning there. <laughs> It is. It's not so bad now, Tammy. It was a little early to get started. <laughs> thank you anyway. Thank you very much for being with us. I have maybe one or two issues I want to discuss with you. I was listening to you very carefully. And the first issue is that uh, there are uh, areas around the world where the flood risk of homes is not insurable, or at least uh, is not insurable at an affordable rate due to an extremely elevated risk of flooding. How do we close this insurance protection gap? And definitely, should we? Thank you, uh, Tammy. And it's, and it's a great question. It's one that we spend a lot of time at, at uh, our global federation and our own associations talking about. We should absolutely close the, the protection gap wherever possible. As long as insurers are able to, to confidently underwrite the risk uh, and work with governments to make it affordable, uh, we should be doing this. And here's, here's one of my concerns um, around how relevant our industry will remain going forward. That if we don't close the protection gap, if more of the damage caused by natural catastrophes falls to government and individual citizens, they will question the value of our industry. They will question the purpose of our industry and they will question the future of our industry. So I think it's critical. Um, and, and Jafia has just started a, um, a project on global protection gaps that we hope will shed some new light on the challenges and on the road ahead. And I'll just give you a very quick example from, from Canada uh, on a project that we've been working on on the issue of flooding, which is, is a growing problem around the world. We have about 800,000 homes in Canada that are at such a high risk of flooding that private insurance is unaffordable for them. And the government just last week, in fact, announced that over the next 18 months, after many years of working with the industry, that they will develop a national flood program, which will include a pool for high-risk property owners, but also in include things such as flood mapping, uh, relocating people after floods, uh, and, and a number of other measures. And this is a, a, as a as a result of extensive dialogue between government and the private sector. So it can be done, it is being done, and there is a, definitely a role for the industry to continue to play 
uh, an advocate role in this and pushing governments to seek these solutions. I think it's in everybody's best interest. Thank you, Don Forjan. And thank you for uh, mentioning the situation in Morocco uh, because of the lack of rain and the climate change is something that we really feel here uh, in this region. The second topic I want to discuss with you is that you talked about the potential emissions impacts related to some of the impact investments and innovative insurance products that are happening. Uh, Don Forjan, please, beyond taking advantage of investment and the, and the right in opportunities and the inher inherent value of reducing emissions, are there potentially any other positive impacts for insurers that are here with us in the room to being leaders on this issue? Absolutely, Tammy. I mean, there, there are a wide range of, of additional benefits in, the, in addition to the ones you mentioned um, uh, for insurers. And, and they, in, in my view, they fall into two categories, uh, customer uh, and staff attraction and, and, and retention. So let me just share just a couple of brief examples from a customer perspective. Uh, I think it's going to enhance our reputation and our credibility, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of our uh, being relevant to, uh, to consumers. It helps to demonstrate um, our, our social purpose uh, and it allows insurers to reconnect with society. It, it will help us build stronger values-based relationships with governments and with, with communities, with investors. It opens um, uh, an opportunity to improve an insurer's competitive position in, in attracting new customers uh, through differentiation. I wasn't aware of this, but millennials are now getting old. Millennials are now 25 to 40 years old. Uh, uh, they're, they're hitting important life milestones. They're buying homes, they're buying life insurance. Uh, they want to do business with, with companies that share their values. And in this case, companies that share a concern uh, and a sensitivity uh, towards the environment. Um, I think retention of existing customers uh, less transactional type relationship uh, are all benefits. And on the staff front, I know that many organizations are struggling post pandemic with retaining uh, staff. And I, I, again, going back to uh, my, millennials, our experience has been, they want to work for organizations that have a certain set of core values, especially values that relate to, the, uh, to, the, to climate change. Uh, it also increases uh, staff satisfaction when they see their organizations taking strong stands in these areas. So there are many, many uh, additional benefits that will accrue uh, insurers who, who play in this space, and, and certainly we would encourage them. Don, uh, I would want to ask all uh, the attendees in this conference to, be, to give a big upload, please. And thank you very much. And thank you for uh, this strong relationship you have with the Moroccan Insurance. So keep in touch and I hope to see you next year here in Casablanca, but in person. Thank you, Don Forgeron. Thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>